Hello and welcome back to That's English. Hello there. Annabelle, what are you wearing? A university graduation gown and hat. What do you need those for? Well, I'm lending them to my niece. She's graduating on Saturday and she can't afford to buy them. Hmm. Students don't get grants, beca de estudios, like they used to. No, they have to take out a loan. In other words, borrow money to pay for their university tuition and living costs. Mm. So they leave university with a large debt, owing lots of money. And though they left home to go to university, now they have to move back home to live with their parents when they finish, until they can find a job. <laughs> and that's why we call them the boomerang generation. Because they leave home and then come back. Just like a boomerang. In today's documentary, we meet Lucy, who's moved back home with her parents after graduating. While you watch, look for the answer to this question. How does the father feel about living with Lucy again? Let's see. Most British students study at universities a long way from home. In the past, they were treated almost like adults because they were no longer financially dependent on their parents. But things have changed. The cost of living has gone up dramatically and student grants have disappeared. Today, if you want to study, you have to take out what's called a student loan. The government has also increased the cost of university tuition, putting huge financial pressure on young people. Some students get grants from companies if they commit to working for them after they graduate, but most, like me, get jobs in cafes or supermarkets. The majority of students will graduate owing thousands of pounds. So even if they find a job immediately, it will take them a long time to pay back such large amounts of money. And there are fewer jobs available for graduates in the recession. So children who had left home are forced to go back to live with their parents. They've become known as the boomerang generation. Lucy is one of these graduates. I'm very grateful to my parents for allowing me to live here, but I would prefer not to be living at home. At university, I could go out, eat, get up when I wanted, but now it's back to, don't forget to call if you won't be back for dinner. They're treating me like a child. Right, I'm gonna go out. Right. Don't forget to call. Not having a job is already bad for my self-esteem. Living with my parents just makes it worse. In 2011, almost three million people aged 20 to 34 lived with their parents, an increase of about 20% since 1997. Well, of course, in some ways, it's lovely to have Lucy here. It's not easy. When she left, we had to adjust our lifestyle and we just got used to the freedom, and then she came back. <sighs> but it's very worrying. Lucy's gonna start her adult life with a huge debt. She doesn't have a job at the moment, so who knows when or if she can get a mortgage to buy her own home. This new situation can seriously affect family relationships. The young person wants to be treated as an adult. Look at this job. But this can cause difficulties for Great. both sides. It'd be right for you, wouldn't it? Yeah. I thought it looked quite good. We do our best not to treat her like a child, but it's really difficult. She hates it when we give her advice on finding a job. But we're only trying to help. It doesn't look as if things are going to improve while the recession continues. So parents will have to try to treat the boomerang generation as adults, and at the same time, their sons and daughters will have to appreciate that they're just temporary guests. Yeah, I can apply to it. Apply. as much as me. <laughs> it's very difficult for everyone in Lucy's family. Mm, they all have to adapt to the new situation now she's back home. Did you get the answer to the question? 
How does the father feel about living with Lucy again? Let's watch it again. Well, of course, in some ways, it's lovely to have Lucy here. It's not easy. When she left, we had to adjust our lifestyle and we just got used to the freedom and then she came back. So the answer is, he feels that in some ways, it's lovely to have Lucy here, but it's not easy. <laughs> That's right. So when did you leave home, Annabelle? Well, I went travelling for a year before starting university. And then I went to university and after that, I found a job. So I never moved back home again. So you were 18, more or less. Mm. We asked our international friends this question. When and why do young people leave their parents' home in your country? Uh, young people usually leave home either at 16 or at 18. 16 if they're going to go into the workplace and 18 if they're going on to further education like to university. Young people are leaving home later and later at the moment. I think it's because of economic reasons that most people try and stay at home as long as possible. In America, many young people, they had a tendency to leave home, I believe, quite late, normally around about 21, 22. It's not very common to leave um, our parents' house because we have very strong um, family bonds. Um, even if we um, start our own family, uh, we still live with our parents. Now, because they can't afford it and money has changed, children are living with their parents a lot longer, up to 30 or sometimes 35. A lot of people, I would say, in their mid-20s kind of decide it's the right time to leave home purely for independence and responsibility. So it's not just about money. In some cultures, it's normal for children to leave home much later. Yes, if they want to go to university, they go to one in their hometown. In fact, that's happening more in Britain now, too. Well, now it's time for today's episode of That's Britain. Today, Elizabeth is visiting an unusual town called Poundbury. Hmm. Poundbury was inspired by the architectural vision of Prince Charles. He wanted to build a modern town where all the community facilities were close to each other. Schools, factories, businesses. So that you could walk everywhere, almost like in a medieval town. As you watch, try and answer this question. What activities take place in the community centre? Let's watch. <laughs> Hello, I'm in Poundbury, a very interesting village in the county of Dorset. It's unusual. All the buildings are new, but they're not exactly modern. They're built with traditional materials and in a traditional style. Poundbury was inspired by Prince Charles, who has very strong opinions on architecture and town planning. In 1989, he wrote and published a book, A Vision of Britain. Building started here in 1993 with the idea that people could live, work and relax in the same area. Factories, offices, shops, schools and community facilities are all within walking distance of people's homes. I'm with Simon Conybeare, who is the manager of the Poundbury Estate for the Duchy of Cornwall. Simon, can you tell me a little bit about the philosophy of Poundbury? Yes, this is uh, perhaps one of the most important new urbanist developments in, in the world. It was started by Leon Carrere in 1993, who's an international uh, master planner and architect. And if you live here, if you buy a house here, you have to know you're living in a mixed-use community, which means you've got businesses around you, you've got facilities around you as well, because you've got shops, hairdressers, vets, doctor surgeries, all within walking distance of homes, just as medieval towns used to be. So what you're saying is you're basically taking an old idea and bringing it forward into the modern day. There's an English expression, there's nothing new in the world. And usually the best ideas are reinventing old ideas. Of course, the shops and other businesses are just as important here as the houses. There are about 60 small businesses here, 
including all the things you'd expect to find in a British village. The pub, the village stores, and this factory, Dorset Cereals, which employs 100 people. Here we are back in the centre of the village. This is Brownswood Hall, which has been built to look like a traditional market hall. Upstairs is the community centre, which is used for lots of different activities, like yoga classes and, and a dance school. Outside, they hold a farmer's market twice a month, and in the square, they sometimes put on plays. What is it like living in Poundbury? Excellent, you know, it's such a great environment, architecturally, obviously, um, and the people here are very friendly. What's it like bringing a young family here? It's good, I mean, it's good schools in Dorchester. Young families are moving in now, and there's quite a community spirit, because we're all new, you know, the houses haven't been here that long, so we're all new people, it's very friendly. Well, I hope you've enjoyed our visit to Poundbury. Next time, we're heading to Bath, so see you then. Well, it looks like a nice place to live. The houses are very attractive and everything looks so clean. Hmm. I think it's too quiet. There weren't many people around. It's an interesting concept, though. A real community like towns used to be in the past. Hmm. Anyway, did you get the answer to our question? What activities take place in the community centre? Let's watch it again. Upstairs is the community centre, which is used for lots of different activities, like yoga classes and, and a dance school. So, in the community centre, there are lots of different activities, like yoga classes and dancing. It's impressive that there are 60 businesses in such a small place, and a factory. And shops, and a market. And a pub. <laughs> that's very important. Well, that's all we have time for today. See you soon for more That's English. Bye-bye. Goodbye. <laughs>